done through them working together. Now, Elijah wasn't alone. He said he was. Nobody was there. In 1 Kings 19, Elijah was talking to God. He said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of armies. He replied, but the Israelites of them, this is where he started complaining, but he was laying out the facts too. The Israelites have abandoned your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and guess who was the prophet? Elijah. He said, man, they're going to kill me. I alone have left that they're looking for me to take my life. And God said, all right, look, get up, go, return the way you came to the wilderness of Damascus. Now, when you arrive, you are, he gave him specific orders. You are to anoint Hazael as king over Aram. You are to anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, son of Shaphat, from abel Mehola as prophet in your place. Then Jehu will put to death whoever escapes the sword of Hazael. Elisha will put to death whoever escapes the sword of Jehu. But I believe 7,000 in Israel, every knee that is not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that is not kissed him, referring to the idol Baal. Elijah, Elijah, you have some more work to do, and you're not alone. Your assignment's not over. You have kings to anoint, battles to win, a successor to prepare. And so that's what he was doing. Now, how many of you have ever heard, and I've heard this several times, people have had a very tough sickness, and they survive it or surgery. And they say, well, I guess God's not finished with me yet. And any of y'all heard that before? Somebody would say that. And yet, they just continue on as normal. And they say, well, you know, God's got something for me. I just, well, if you ask God, He'll show you. He'll show you if you ask Him. Now, when you're down, when, you're, when you get depressed and what am I going to do? God does it, is not mad at you. Some people think, well, I shouldn't be this way. God's going to be mad at me. No, He doesn't get mad at you. The loving kindness of God will restore you. So don't be afraid. You do get those points in time. You get depressed. You get down. you got to remember, we're pursued by two spiritual beings. We're pursued by the Creator God who actively loves us and, seeking and uh, seeks to save us while we're still, even while we're still His enemies. He is still seeking us. And He wants to bring us to Him. And it's about God's grace and love. But we also have another entity, created entity, called Satan. He's a fallen creature. He pursues us, like in Scripture tells us, like a lion, a hungry, roaring lion pursuing us. He wants to devour us. His agenda, his strategy, his rule is, I just want to kill, steal, and destroy. That, that's Satan's uh, action plans and goals. To steal, kill, and destroy. Period. And so these two are coming after us, but as we trust God, He protects us from that one. And the thing is, we need to keep our spiritual priorities in place. Because if we don't, we'll tend to drift away. Hebrews 2 says, For this reason we must pay attention all the more to what we have heard, talking about Scripture and teaching, so that we will not drift away. Because it's very easy to drift away. Any of y'all ever, you didn't tie your boat up good enough and it drifted off. Any of y'all ever had that? You thought it was tied up good at the dock or somewhere? And you look out and... Where's that boat? Oh, there it is. Oh, man. It's only like 50 yards offshore. Who's going to go get that? It just drifted away. It's easy. And so you have to be careful not to drift away from your spiritual priorities. Because, now, keeping your spiritual priorities in place is your responsibility, not anybody else's. You have to. That's your responsibility. Let's bow our heads. We've got a lot, a lot to look at as we navigate this year. Already it's become a challenge for many people. And we're just on January 23rd. And somebody the other day told me, well, maybe God's doing all this at the beginning of the year and the rest of it will be okay. Huh? Maybe, maybe not. So, but anyway, as we trust Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. 
we can trust Him for all of these things in life. And that's where the prayer and the praise comes in. That even when it looks bad, praise Him. Say thank you. Lord, I don't understand this. And I can't see my way through this. But would you take care of it? I just praise you and thank you. So why don't you just pray that right now. Just to the Lord. Just to praise Him and to thank Him. Karen's just going to play one verse of the hymn. You can pray at your seat. You want to come down here and pray. You're more than welcome to do that.